Welcome to Dr. Mary Ann Block, Medical Detective. Dr. Block is the medical director of the Block Center, an international clinic for the treatment of chronic health problems in children and adults. She is the mom who went to medical school at age 39 to save her daughter. She is a top-selling author of eight books. She is a physician who has helped thousands for over 20 years. She is a tireless advocate who speaks about the dangers of psychiatric drugs. And now, welcome Dr. Marianne Block, medical detective. Hi, I'm Dr. Marianne Block. Today I want to talk about just because you're depressed doesn't mean you have depression. I even wrote a book on this same subject. And this is important to me because I have seen so many women come into my practice after seeing other doctors who gave them a diagnosis of depression, prescribed an antidepressant, but never did a single blood test, never did a medical workup to see if there was a cause for them being depressed. And this is really important when we look at the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, which is the psychiatrist manual of all of the psychiatric disorders. So it lists the diagnoses, it lists the symptoms of each diagnosis. And so when we talk about depression, this is what the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual says, that you must have at least five of these following nine symptoms. Remember, you need to have five of them. So if you've been to the doctor and you said, I'm not sleeping well, and the doctor says, oh, I think you have depression, here's your antidepressant, that's not five symptoms. So here's the five symptoms. One, of course, is feeling depressed. Also, a marked decrease in interest in your activities. Also, you could be losing weight or gaining weight. You could be not sleeping or sleeping too much. Psychomotor agitation, which means you get irritable very easily, maybe fly off the handle. You have a lot of fatigue, you have lack of energy. You also have feelings of worthlessness or guilt. You have the diminished ability to think and concentrate properly. And you may have recurrent thoughts of suicide or death, but you have to have five of those symptoms to actually qualify for this diagnosis of depression. And there's some other criteria as well. Another one is that the symptoms must cause impairment in your social and occupational life. So say you don't like your job and you feel depressed when you get to work, but you're perfectly fine at home. Well, that's not really depression based on the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. The symptoms cannot be accounted for by bereavement. So they can't be that you feel depressed because you've just lost your loved one. And one of the most important uh, listings in the book is that the symptoms cannot be due to the direct effect of an underlying medical condition. Now, that says to me that before a doctor can give a diagnosis of depression, they've ruled out all underlying medical conditions that could have caused someone to feel depressed. Well, I don't see that happening, particularly in the patients that come to my office after being given a diagnosis of depression. They tell me again, they listened to the symptom, they gave them the drug, that's all there was. And so it's important to understand that for depression, there is no lab test, there is no x-ray. It's completely subjective based on what somebody tells you. But there are truly underlying medical conditions that can cause you to feel depressed. And the first one that I see the most often is hypothyroidism. Now, hypothyroidism is often underdiagnosed and sometimes undertreated. Many people have hypothyroidism, but their blood work is normal. And we're going to talk about that another time. But just know that often people don't get the diagnosis they need and they are truly hypothyroid. And that can make you feel depressed. It can cause you to sleep too much or not sleep. It can cause you to gain weight. It can cause feelings of worthlessness. 
It can cause thoughts of death or suicide. It can cause the inability to think and concentrate properly. So all those symptoms that we use for depression can also be caused from hypothyroidism. There are nutritional deficiencies that also cause you to feel depressed. Take iron, for example. I had a patient that saw another doctor and she was depressed and the doctor diagnosed her with depression and prescribed an antidepressant. But before she took that medication, she came to see me and I did some blood work. She had a severe anemia. She was severely iron deficient. And when we corrected that iron deficiency, she was no longer depressed. So she didn't have depression. She didn't have the need for, a, for a de, antidepressant. She needed iron. There are other nutritional deficiencies. Magnesium, for example, is an important mineral that can help with this, the feelings of depression. Vitamin B12, some of the other B vitamins. There's numerous articles in the medical literature about supplements, nutritional deficiencies that can cause you to feel depressed. Then there's hormone imbalances, another very important one for women. If we think about the term postpartum depression, many women get that diagnosis after they've given birth. They feel depressed, and the doctor says you have postpartum depression. Here, take this antidepressant. Well, the problem with that is they don't have postpartum depression. They have a hormone imbalance. So it should be called postpartum hormone imbalance. And instead of getting a, an antidepressant, they should have their hormones balanced. You know, there's not a single doctor in the world that would disagree with the statement that postpartum depression is a hormone imbalance. So why are we not balancing the hormones instead of just prescribing psychiatric drugs? Allergies can also cause you to feel depressed and even anxious. I have many patients who become anxious when they eat a certain food. And we're able to skin test them and find out which food makes them feel that way. It can also make them feel depressed. So allergies is another medical condition that must be ruled in or out before you give a diagnosis of depression. Of course, there's drug side effects. And everybody should get the drug insert from their pharmacy and read the side effects. So the only way you can know if the benefit of a certain medication is worth the risk of the side effects is for you to know what they are. Because according to the FDA, less than 1% of doctors know the side effects of the drugs they prescribe. So you should know them. Because there are side effects. And when we talk about antidepressants, here are some of the side effects that can occur. Suicide, homicide, psychosis, delusions, hallucinations, agitation, confusion, hostility, personality disorder, impaired judgment, depersonalization, paranoia, antisocial behaviors. Yes, those are real side effects to antidepressants. So it shouldn't really surprise us when the young man from the Columbine murders uh, was taking one of these antidepressants. If he was one of those people that had this side, these side effects, you could see that he could have been delusional. He could have been confused. He could have been having hallucinations. And then he committed homicide and suicide. Certainly it doesn't happen to everyone, but it's very, very important that you never stop a psychiatric medication abruptly. They should always be done very slowly and under a doctor's care and supervision because some of these side effects can actually get worse when you're trying to come off the drug, not just when you're taking the drug. So we have all these different mass murder school shootings that are occurring, and what we continue to hear after they occur is the individual who caused the tragedies was often under the care of a psychiatrist. If that were the case, most likely they were taking a psychiatric medication. And in fact, we hear that many of them were. And if those were the people that had these side effects that I mentioned, we can understand how this could happen. But now, fortunately, we have a genetic test 
that can be done on every individual to tell us who is at higher risk for committing suicide and or homicide from taking these antidepressants. So there are individuals who actually are at higher risk to these all of these side effects to the drugs, and it's a test I've been doing in my practice for many years. And if someone has this genetic marker, they are at this risk, and they shouldn't take these drugs, and they should come off of them slowly under a doctor's supervision. But I think that if you do the real medical workup that is required, that is stated in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, all medical conditions must be ruled out before a diagnosis of depression can be made. And if that occurs, I think other doctors will find, as I have, that prescribing antidepressants is unnecessary. So it's important to try to find a doctor who will help you find the cause, fix the problem, and not just cover symptoms with drugs. Thank you for joining us. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching this episode of Dr. Marianne Block, Medical Detective.